When an NFL team has a good season, it can sometimes be hard to duplicate that the next season. That's to be expected. But sometimes a team will go way too far in the other direction, dropping to depths previously unthinkable. There have been several ugly drop-offs during the Super Bowl era, and today we will be looking at the 10 teams with the biggest drop-off from one season to the next. As we always do, we will be using C-Score to make these determinations, specifically a team's drop in C-Score. It's not just how many fewer games a team won. There are other factors involved, including these listed here. A further explanation of C-Score can be found in the description of this video below. We had a couple of rules here that eliminated one team from the top 10. A team's first season had to result in at least a 500 record with a positive C-score, while that team's second season had to result in a sub-500 record with a negative C-score. Thus, the 1969 Baltimore Colts were not included here, as their all-time great team from 1968 saw a downturn that still resulted in a winning record and a positive C-score. Their drop-off of negative 42.496 would have otherwise come in 6th place. Thank you for being with us today as we get on to this countdown. And where else to start off than at number 10, we're taking a look at the 2010 Carolina Panthers. Going back to the 09 season, they had a positive C score, 7.567, above average, nothing that great. But the way they fell the next season in 2010, down to negative 33.156, that difference is negative 40.723. As we said in 09, the Panthers weren't anything all that special. They had an 8-8 eight eight record. They finished third place in their division. They missed the playoffs. They barely outscored their opponents. They did have the third hardest strength of schedule. All in all, they were very much a middle-of-the-road team. It's in 2010, though, where the wheels fell off the wagon. From 8-8 eight eight down to 2-14, and 14, they were dead last in the NFL, came up with the number one pick in next season's draft. Their head coach got fired. They only scored more than 20 points in the entire season two times, and at no point did they ever score more than 23 points. We move on now to number nine and a team that by name no longer exists, the 1994 Houston Oilers. Now the season before, they were in contention as they had been for a while. Their C-score was 19.537. Things went very badly in 1994. From about 20 over to 20 under at negative 21.283. The total drop off, 40.821. The 93 Oilers went 12-4 and, and they were making their 7th straight playoff appearance, but they had never once made it to the AFC title game. In fact, they had never even hosted in the divisional round. This year they got to do that, everything seemed like it was in place, only for them to lose to the Chiefs. Now for 94, there was the promise that if they didn't get anything done the year before, that the team would be taken apart. And boy howdy, that's exactly what happened. And as they got taken apart off the field, they fell apart on it, dropping all the way down to 2-14. and 14. Head coach Jack Pardee was fired during the season. At one point, they had lost 11 straight. They were a total train wreck, yet they only got to pick third in the following year's draft, falling down in the pecking order behind the expansion Panthers and Jaguars. Coming in at number 8 is the only team on the backs of a Super Bowl championship, the 1987 New York Giants. And in winning that championship, they put together an incredible C-score, 37.478. They went below average the next year, not drastically, negative 3.363, but enough to see that difference of negative 40.842 in overall C-score. And that Super Bowl 21 championship team was indeed amazing. They went 14-2 during the season. It's the one and only time the Giants have been the number one seed and the Super Bowl champion in the same season. In fact, they ranked as the 12th greatest Super Bowl champion of all time. Check out our video on that if you want to see the whole list. They were clearly on the top of the mountain. Now, 1987 brought some challenges. They got off to a slow start at 0-2, before a 
player strike halted the season for one week. When they came back, though, it wasn't the real Giants. They were replacement player Giants, and they went 0-3 in those games. Their 6-4 finish to the season was not enough. And as we mentioned in our video of worst defending Super Bowl champions, this is a bit unfair to rank them like this. We gave them an asterisk in that video. They clearly weren't as good this season as they were in 86. So no asterisk here, but maybe they wouldn't have made the top 10. Coming in at number 7 is a team that likes making its way into our videos. The 2007 Baltimore Ravens. In 06, they cleared the 24 mark in C-score, not by much, but they did it indeed. Then they dropped all the way down to negative 17.205 in 07. That change in C-score, 41.227. 2006 was a big bounce back season for the Ravens as we covered in our video of One Year Wonders. They went 13-3 and they were a true contender, but their nightmares came true when the Indianapolis Colts, at one time the Baltimore Colts, returned to Baltimore in the playoffs and beat them. It seemed like they may have had something to build on, but 2007 proved that not to be the case. Or if they were, it was like building a house on top of mud. They went 5-11 despite a 4-2 start. They lost 9 straight games. Over the course of the season, they were outscored by more than 100 points. They wound up hitting the reset button. They fired head coach Brian Billick, and they hired John Harbaugh, who of course, as of the making of this video, is still in place there. We're nearing the midway point at number 6, and we arrive at the 2003 Oakland Raiders. 2002 was a great season. They cleared 26 in C-score and were favorites to win the Super Bowl. 2003, not so much. Dropping all the way down to around negative 15, the drop-off was negative 41.746. The Raiders had been growing in power over the last few seasons, and this season was meant to be the culmination. Even though they were only 11-5, they were the AFC's number one seed. And as we mentioned, they made the Super Bowl and were favorites in that game. But the game was an absolute mess and they got blown off the field. In 2003, this already old team began to age out. They were a comedy of errors. Head coach Bill Callahan described the team as the dumbest in America. Hey, he was the leader of that team, he would know. At 4-12, they were tied for the worst record in the entire league, and they didn't make the playoffs again until 2016, and as of 2023, they've not yet won a playoff game. We've made it to the second half of the countdown, kicking that off at number 5 are the 1999 Atlanta Falcons. 1998 may have been the best season in Falcons history. Their C-score cleared 25. 1999, the momentum wasn't there. They dropped down to almost negative 18. The drop-off in total was 43.13. The Falcons rode the momentum of late 97 into 98, yet they were never really taken seriously. Never mind they were 14-2 and and won their division. They were in the shadow of the 15-1 and Vikings though, but they got out of that shadow by beating them in Minnesota to get to the Super Bowl, where they couldn't close the deal. Whatever hope they may have had going into 1999 was quickly dashed. They opened the season 0-4. Then they were 1-6 before finishing 5-11, and, and they had to win their last two games of the season to get there. They were outscored by almost 100 points, and it gave a lot of credence to the idea that 1998 was indeed a fluke season. Yes, Jamal Anderson held out in the offseason, then got injured, but that alone does not result in such a huge failure. Creeping closer to the end, we go to number 4 and a bygone version of the Cleveland Browns from 1990. 1989, their C-score wasn't spectacular, it was higher than 10, above average for sure, but what happened to them in 1990 was really bad. Negative 33.14, the difference in C-score here was 43.937. Now Cleveland had a good run during the late 80s, this was the end of it. Their record in 89 was a not that stellar 9-6-1, but they were back in the AFC title game for the third time in four years, all of them against the Broncos, and they lost all those games. This was the only game that wasn't achingly close. 
1990, it was as if the deal they made with the devil expired. They went 3-13, and they gave up 462 points, and they were outscored by 234 points. Head coach Bud Carson was fired mid-season. Their 10-point opening day win was the highlight of the entire year. Bill Belichick was brought in to bring relevance to the Browns, which he did, but that only lasted until 1995, when it was announced that they were moving to Baltimore, and things fell apart once again. Coming in third is yet another team coming off a Super Bowl loss, the 2002 St. Louis Rams. Look at that 0-1 squad, 38 plus points in C score. They were bound to drop some, but the idea of them falling below average to negative 8 was not expected. That change in C-score was a massive 46.787. This was supposed to be a dynasty. In 01, the Rams went 14-2, running roughshod over the NFL. They scored 503 points, their third consecutive season, clearing the 500-point mark. They outscored their opponents by 230 points. But in the Super Bowl, they ran into Bill Belichick, and he knows how to pick apart a historically good offense. 2002 was a different story. They started 0-5 before getting up to 5-5 but they couldn't carry that momentum and wound up with a 7-9 finish. They were down to 316 points scored and were bottom 10 in points scored and points allowed, with Mike Martz fairly quickly being exposed despite holding on until 2005. They weren't terrible per se, but the drop-off was monumental nonetheless. At number two, we have our one and only repeat franchise as well as the oldest team on this countdown the 1974 Atlanta Falcons. In 1973, they were less than 10 years old. They had started to figure things out a little bit. Their C-score was pushing up against 15. That didn't last into 1974, where they dropped all the way down to negative 33.208. The difference in C-score, 48.14. The 1973 squad was built off the backs of some decent seasons from 71 and 72. They did go 9 and 5 in 73. It was their first positive double digit C score. Back then, there was only one wildcard team, though, and they missed the playoffs, becoming the only team in the NFC that season that wasn't in the playoffs. 1974 brought different challenges. Offensive line and other offensive issues led to a collapse. They went 3 and 11. They scored 111 points all season. That's fewer than 8 points per game. They were outscored by 160. Both of those numbers were the worst in the league. And five different teams had a better point differential than the Falcons had points scored. And they were looking like the expansion era Falcons all over again. Somebody has to top this list, and to my dismay, coming in at number one are the 1999 San Francisco 49ers. In 98, they were as strong as they'd always been. C-score clearing 25 points. 1999 was almost a mirror opposite, in fact worse, dropping down to negative 27. 0.795 and the only team in the Super Bowl era to have a single season drop off of more than 50 points at 52.99. The 98 49ers were 12 and 4, but because of the Falcons, they had to settle for the wild card. Now they won in the wild card round against the Green Bay Packers. That broke a streak of three consecutive seasons being eliminated by the Packers in the playoffs, but then they once again fell to Atlanta. In 1999, they opened the season 3-1. They had some injuries to deal with, yes, especially Steve Young's, but that's not enough to collapse them as bad as they did, especially considering that that one loss to start the season was a 38-point defeat to the Jacksonville Jaguars. They wound up going 1-11 the rest of the way, that win ironically over Atlanta, to finish 4-12. This was the end of the 49er dynasty that began in 1981, despite a mini-rebound that took place in 2000 and 2001. Looking at the top 10 at a glance, there was very little separating numbers 10 through 6, barely more than one full point of C-score. There was a small jump to number 5, and number 4 was close. 
the biggest jump started happening from here with the Rams at 46, Atlanta at 48, and the Niners all the way at virtually 53. Maybe one day some team's going to come along and do it worse than the Niners, but that's going to be tough. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us for this video. Be sure to give it a like and some shares, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Don't forget to click that bell icon for future notifications, so you don't miss any other ranking videos that we have coming. Are there any teams from the 2023 season that you can see dropping so dramatically next season? I don't know, anything seems to be possible in the NFL. Are there any teams you thought would make this list that didn't? Did one of these teams not deserve to be here? Sound off on that or anything else on your mind in the comments below. I certainly love all positive comments, but believe it or not, I love the negative ones too, which I do receive from time to time. Thank you again, and until next time, I hope you have an awesome day.